Hi everyone, um, this week we're continuing with our series on the crab people eat. Before we go any further, hit the subscription icon and the bell so that you can get our latest notification. See you on the flip side as we continue. Hi everyone. So um, last week we started um, to address the solution, um, the solution God gave us to our diets and the things we eat. Um, and this solution has got deep spiritual benefits, deep spiritual truths aligned to it. And man, we are going to go into it, we are going to look at it. But today I'm more focused on the physiological aspect of this thing. And this thing is an art which seemingly has been lost to the modern day church. And this art is the art of fasting. Now when you speak about art, it is ancient. And it also comes naturally because the way our bodies were designed, they were not designed to consume as much food as we're consuming. They were actually designed to go days without fasting regularly. You know, to go intermittent fasting, not to eat all the time as much as we're eating. Um, in a number of religions throughout the world, Hindus fast, Muslims fast, people everywhere, they fast, spiritists, everyone fasts, you understand? And um, there's been a surge of late in scientific breakthroughs concerning fasting, but the church has known these secrets for millennia, and today they are seen as scientific breakthroughs. So it is high time we go back to the roots, hence we are here in a rooty tree. So you can go back to our roots. And so now let us look at why should we fast? Remember, the essential problem we're facing today is the crap people eat. It's an acronym I came up with. Um, C for carbonated drinks. R for refined carbohydrates. A for artificial foods. And the P for processed foods. Everything is processed. Everything is artificial. Um, things are refined and... Uh, we are drinking carbonated things and those are not good for us. And so now, when you go to the root of the matter, there are appetites we have. And there are four major appetites man has. Four major appetites. We have an appetite for food. And this appetite is necessary so that we can eat the things we're supposed to eat. So that we can get the nourishment we're supposed to get. So we have an appetite for food. That gives us nourishment. The second appetite is an appetite for recreation. Because a man cannot be an island, a man cannot be alone. We need, we are social beings. Um, we also need recreation. Without recreation, we will lose our minds. You understand? It's an appetite for recreation. The third appetite is an appetite for God. That's why everywhere you go, there is something people believe in a moral value set. There is something people hold on to, something people believe. And there is an appetite for sex. It is natural. That is for the purpose of reproduction. So these are the four major appetites man has. Now something happens when these appetites begin to overmaster us. When these appetites go too far, then we have what we call lust. A lust is any overmastering appetite. You see, when you begin to lust after things, that's when you lose it. That's when our appetites um, are giving us a problem. We can have a sexual appetite. We can have, we can have a, a lust for food. You understand? And so now we need to curb all of these appetites. We need to curb excess. We need to learn to master self-control. And so, we have adrenal problems, we have kidney problems, we have a variety of other health issues and problems. And these can be rectified through fasting. We are addicted to certain things, we are addicted to sugars, we are addicted to drinks, we are addicted to all these things, and they are all bad for us. We have so many addictions, so many addictions, and we need to fight against them. But how can we do that? Let me show you how deep the problem goes. The environment, now of late, over 76,000 chemicals have been introduced to our environment 
in the past 100 years over 76,000 chemicals chemicals which are not naturally occurring so the environment does not know how to process all these chemicals our bodies also don't know how to process these chemicals that's why we now have what you call pollution air pollution noise pollution we have all these things in our environments and also in our bodies there was a chemical a pesticide called ddt and ddt this um pesticide it was used to kill pests and it worked wonders it killed pests but it had many other adverse effects because DDT stays in the environment. It goes into the, into the crops. It ends up in the harvest. It does not stay there. Even when you wash the fruit, it is still in the fruit. It is still in the crop. You eat it, it is now in your body. And when DDT is in your body, it begins to negatively affect you. That's why we had a, a, a generation of children who were born because of DDT, they were deformed and, um, and all these things. And we later discovered it is because of DDT, which is sprayed on, on our crop, right? What a nice play of words, crap, crop. <laughs> and so now it was because of DDT. And now it has been discontinued. Our aerosol cans and our fridges as well, you know, our air cons, they all used something, uh, a, a chemical compound, ne, a family of compounds called CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons. So now it is chlorine, fluorine, and carbon in a chemical structure, and they were used in aerosol cans. It made aerosol cans work wonderfully. By aerosol cans, I mean your air freshener, your, your deodorant, um, anything sprayed, anything pressurized, even your fridge, your aircon. All these things use chlorofluorocarbons and this ended up in the environment and when they were in the environment they began to negatively affect the environment and they have an ability to hold heat so there is insulation coming from the Sun insulation it is shortened for incoming solar radiation we have insulation coming from the Sun but this insulation is reflected back into space by water and a certain uh, uh, chemicals in, in the atmosphere like your ozone but because of CFCs CFCs attacks ozone and the ozone layer begins to erode and when the ozone layer begins to erode uh, we now have the greenhouse effect we now have global warming temperatures are going higher when temperatures are going higher the environment is changing altogether all this because of chemicals which were introduced into the environment and this happened particularly with the industrial revolution with all the sulfur and carbon dioxide which was released through chemical uh, combustion into the atmosphere now if chemicals have such an adverse effect on nature how much more for our bodies interesting isn't it now I will leave you on a cliffhanger come back next week as you continue dishing out and dropping knowledge on these things and let us all <laughs> be woke so uh, give me a thumbs up on this video leave me a comment share it be sure to hit the subscription icon and hit the bell as well to get the latest notifications i'm Cyril peterson see you again next week 10 a.m sharp cheers <laughs>